Hey guys, Jeff and Kendra, time for a little R&R. &R. So this is our first episode, we're really excited to bring it to you. Yes. Uh, we're going to go over a couple things. Um, first things first, it's going to be the massive king snake that was found in California. We're going to talk about that, the upcoming reptile shows, the U.S. ARC updates. Yes. That big, big issue down in North Carolina. Um, I think you say you say down just because we're north. <laughs> Yeah. I do that sometimes. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> the okay. giant forest tortoise release. That's really, I love that story. Mm. The snake, uh, the fact, the fun fact of the week, if I can talk. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Fun fact of the week. What crocs your socks? I uh, mm. love that segment. And mm -hmm. then, of course, the CDC article about salmonella. Wash your that's, hands, guys. Yeah, that's an interesting one. And then the BAMF of the week. If you don't know what BAMF means, uh, you were not a nice kid. You're not a nice no. kid. No. Uh, <laughs> Hags. Um, BAMF stands for <laughs> badass motherfucker. Let's um, do it. <laughs> so, yeah. So, let's get right into it. Yes. Let's start with the king snake that was found. The quote unquote, I'm doing air quotes for those who are just listening, massive California king snake. Yeah, you can definitely tell if you've read the article or seen the pictures. Um, this massive king snake was found. Uh, down in California, and they did a little bit of forest perspective. So they did say it was roughly about seven feet. I'm not sure how exactly how they measured this. To yeah, get this that size. is that is a mystery from this but, article. <laughs> but they did like post the picture, and it's kind of like you know when you're a kid and you take a picture of the fish or how fishermen still do, and they make it look a lot bigger than it actually is. Mm. But without even if it's six feet, even if it's five feet, that's still a very large king snake because I think on average they're about four feet. Yeah, I would say at least it's like it's a large one for the wild. Oh yeah, definitely. It's not being like, it's eating good. It's eating real good. <laughs> it looked like a thick boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a rattlesnake for dinner. But yes, that was an awesome one. They did find it over in the area where they are building a like animal land bridge, Animal Crossing, down there in California. It's <laughs> not the game. <laughs> <laughs> not Animal Crossing, no, not that game. I don't know. I've never played that game. Neither do I. No. no. We're not cultured. Um, <laughs> so that was pretty cool. I really did like hearing, you know, hearing that they're one building an awesome land bridge over there, mm. but two just that these kind of giants out there are being found. I don't know. It's... Yeah. So for those who are wondering, it's called the Wallace Annenberg Wildlife Crossing, um, and it's going to be a connection between the Simi. I don't know how to say that. Hills to the Santa Monica Mountains via yeah. a 210 foot vegetated overpass that will span across the Ventura Freeway. That's going to be awesome because I know yeah. there's like mountain lions and different things like that over there. So Black the, bears. Black bears, yeah. Obviously so, king snakes. Obviously <laughs> big old king snakes. So Yeah. <laughs> so good on for you guys. Definitely, I think that snake was actually going to go out into the road too. So yeah. On you, Alberto. So thank you. Yeah, for that. he was the guy that. that Pulled it out of the out of danger. So, yes. kudos, kudos, Alberto. Um, moving on, we are going to discuss. We're going to briefly discuss the reptile upcoming reptile shows. Not only local for for all our PNW listeners. West Coast, um, West Coast. West Coast hashtag West Coast, Best Coast. Um, but also the ones like the national recognized ones. We did make a big oopsie this week, yes. and we totally forgot to include the Show Me Snakes shows um so next episode number two which will come out in about a week uh we'll include those dates as well so yes we will get started with uh do you want to start with the local ones yeah let's start with the the ones that you know we were really excited because we get to actually vend them um the pack northwest reptile show that's gonna be in hillsborough oregon yes. april 23rd and april 24th love that show it's put on by jeff hoffman awesome dude yeah puts on a really good show it's a two-day show um down there in Hillsboro, it's always been really good. Like, yeah. A lot of people come out. The venue is just amazing. It's huge. The, yeah. <laughs> then we do, like, this vendor dinner out there, which is just awesome. That's so. always a blast. It's always a blast when you actually get to, like, meet fellow vendors and yep. people just in your community and just get to connect with them and just have a good time. I mean, that's most of the reason. I mean, if I, we don't sell – if we sell one snake and at least pay for the tables, we're happy. But getting able to interact with all the customers, interact with our fellow, like, just – you know, vendor friends, things like that. Our that's reptile that's nerd really friends. what it's about. It's a good yeah. time overall. Yes, absolutely. Um, and then after that, locally wise, we do have the Monroe show, the Northwest Reptile Expo down in yes. Monroe. That's May 14th. Down, down again. Down, down. down. Across, <laughs> up, up, down, <laughs> something. <Across. laughs> yeah, that's in Monroe, Washington, uh, May yeah May 14th. Yes. So one day show uh, put on by John and Cece. Cool thing about that one, 20 minutes away. 
Yeah, so it's like kind of in our backyard. So we'll be vending both shows as not Reptile News Radio, um, but as our uh, alternate ego, Puget Sound Pythons. So if you go to one of the shows, if you're local, you want to check it out, hit us up, say what's up. Uh, we'll say hi back. And we may or may not have by then Reptile News Radio stickers. We will have stickers by then. So, yeah, definitely. Or something. <laughs> I'm going to make it my mission to get some stickers. Cool. <laughs> cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Uh, moving on, we will start with the National Breeders. National. Wow, I can't talk. National Reptile Breeders Expo. So excited about that show. I am, too. I It's it's the only other show that we've been to as a power couple. Um, Kendra. <laughs> hashtag Kendra. <laughs> Um, that's in Daytona, Florida. And then again, that'll be August 20th through the 21st. Um, if you haven't been to the Donut Show, it is a blast. Get there early. You um, gotta get there that Thursday. and then It's a full party weekend. It's, 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 it's definitely a get-together of a lot of awesome people. Like, uh, absolutely. And there's a beach. It's like literally ocean, beach, hotel, road, convention center. Like, it's, it's five minutes. The hotel, if you stay in the hotel, yeah. is like a five-minute walk to the convention center where the actual show is held. Yep. Um, and then in your spare time, you can just chill at the beach, which is awesome. You're not that far or from poolside. the St. Augustine Alligator Farm, which is just an awesome experience. Oh, uh, seeing those absolutely. Indian girls where it's really freaking cool. Yeah, yeah. And if you're lucky, you'll get to meet Cody and Pia at the Reptile Preservation Institute. Well, I think I don't they're know having th- a party this on the Thursday before. Uh, the Daytona show. So is that confirmed yet? Uh, they they did post about it, but they didn't post the details yet. So okay. So once we find out the details of we'll that, we will it. let you guys know because I am so stoked. They have an awesome collection. Definitely, if they do it, you got to make it out to that. Cause yeah, and yeah, because we have we have some great pictures on our Instagram from from when we visited last year, and it was just an absolute blast. Before our camera died. <laughs> Before Jeff forgot to bring Never batteries. Never would do that. No, it's crazy. Mm. But yes, um, so that is Daytona. Definitely make it out there. Be there, be square kind of thing. After that, we do have the Reptile Super Shows. There's going to be a couple of those. There's one in, that just happened actually, the Pomona Show. Oh, yeah, you're totally right, because it is the 25th of January. Or is it? I don't know. Um, But that was, I heard it was an awesome show. It was packed, the, like a block line, or block long line out there was just insane. Like. Um, it was long. It was know. a lot of. There's a lot of cool people there. I wish we had talked about going, but we just didn't. We didn't. Work life. Yeah. yeah. But next year, I do want to make it out to there. Absolutely. It's just an awesome show, from what I hear. Then after that, you have Anaheim, which is July 9th and 10th, the San Diego, 13th and 14th of August, and then of course Las Vegas, September and 11th. Mm. Uh, we are actually thinking about vending the Las Vegas show. So if you've ever been to the Las Vegas show. I'm sorry. Um, what? <laughs> Yeah, I just decided for us just now. This just in. <laughs> <laughs> this just in. Breaking news. No. Breaking news. Um, so if you actually vended the Las Vegas show, definitely let us know because we want to know if it's worth it, if it's actually a good time. Yeah, hit us up uh, via yeah. Messenger or Instagram or whatever yes. social media platform you use. Um, I would love to hear about your experience there, what mm-hmm. the show's like, uh, the heat. Oh, I, I mean, I lived in Vegas for a little bit, so it's not too bad. In and September? plus it's September. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Worth cool. it. I don't know. Risk it for the biscuit. Cool. Um, and then, of course, we have the NRABC, one of the biggest shows definitely in the country. Mm, you got the super absolutely. shows, you got the Daytona, and you got the Tinleys. Mm-hmm. Um, so you do have Tinley Park, which is, of course, there's two dates for that, March 19th and 20th. Um, we're not going to be there, I don't think, this year uh, for the March show. Mm, and then the October one, maybe? we're actually, we're, maybe we might go to that. Maybe the October show. Yeah. So if you're Is that the Tinley, better one to go, or is it the March one? I mean, I think it, from what I hear it is, okay. but I think they're both when good. Are, when are all our... October. Okay, cool. <laughs> cool. So we, so look out for us. Hopefully we will be going out to the October show. Um, then we have the Arlington show, which they actually have a closer show coming up, which is February 12th and 13th in Arlington, Texas, as well as September 24th and 25th. I've heard good things about that one too. Yeah. I, I've been really wanting to go to an Arlington show because it's, it's not that far. It's Texas. Only Washing- 30-something hours. Washington yeah. to Texas is not that far. Washington yeah. State, let me put it that way. It's not too far when she's not the one driving, guys. I'm just saying. Yeah, um, great. We'll, we'll <laughs> drive 23 hours. I mean, Jeff will drive 23 hours. <laughs> <laughs> then we have the St. Charles, uh, Missouri shows, which is mm-hmm. April 30th, uh, May 1st, and then also November 12th and 13th. Yes. Um, and then lastly, they have the Schaumburg show. That's in Illinois, and that's going to be July 23rd and 24th. 
So, guys, those are some awesome shows that you need to be on lookout for. Mm. And if you guys have any shows that we missed, because I know we did, we missed the Herp shows and we missed the Show Me Snake shows. Yes. Um, if there's a show that you want to highlight, and just message us because we would love to make sure everybody knows about it. Absolutely. So they can be there. Absolutely. All right. And then now. We All have... right. So, yeah, we're going to move into our U.S. ARC updates. Um, Jeff, do you want to? Yeah. So this is probably the most important for, like, us and everybody um, part of the show. It's the U.S. ARC. If you're not supporting U.S. ARC or sign up for their newsletter, you definitely need to do that. Stop what you're doing. Stop listening to this. Go sign up for the U.S. ARC. Go support them. Go side like note. them. Side note. The, the newsletter is uh, free. Free 99? Free. Free 99. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Thing. That's like, that's incredible that you can get all this great information and updates for free. Yes. For free. You ain't got to pay nothing. And this is what money. keeps our passion Sorry. alive. Yes. Absolutely. There's a lot of legislation that comes through that does not pass because of U.S. ARC. Um, so you definitely need to be staying involved because just because it's not a, impacting you right now doesn't mean it won't. Exactly. So right now there is an alert going on about North Carolina. Um, if you guys did not get on the virtual Zoom hearing, I definitely recommend you guys go and look and watch uh, Jeremy's and Rob's over at Reptile Talk. They did a recent episode where they talked about the Zoom call and how it went overall and talking points and things like that. Mm -hmm. So definitely go give that a listen. They're a lot more knowledgeable in Ark stuff than us. But nonetheless, <laughs> there was a one thing we wanted to put out in regard to the Ark stuff. They have, I think it's the deadline for the comments is yes. January 31st. Um, they made it super easy for you guys. They had a sample letter. All you got to do is personalize it a little bit and then send it off. Yes. They literally have it written out. They've done you... it for you. You copy paste. The work is done. Like it's you copy so paste easy. and then you add a little tidbit. You sprinkle some enthusiasm. Hey, my name's Karen. Like you know whatever. Yeah. Like come on. You just sprinkle. Like it's not that hard, guys. Come on. Like even if you share it, like that's just spread the news. Just spread the news, guys. It's it's not that hard. Because it may I be take news today, but it you know it could be just a ball of python next. Yeah. I don't know. And we I, I hope I don't see that day, but maybe. <laughs> so yeah. Get so involved. With, US Arc. Yeah, what might be happening in North Carolina might be happening in your hometown, and then it might be happening in your state, and then it might be happening across the nation. So definitely it's it's important that we all stay involved. It's important that we all stay up to date, and we read what the information that the US Arc folks, uh, Phil Goss and team, put out. Yes. It's, it's, I can't stress this enough. It's, it's incredibly important that you do that. You can either, one, free 99, the newsletter, or two, you know, sign up for, to be a US Arc member and get a shirt. I definitely recommend that route because yeah. the shirt's pretty cool. It's really comfy. It's a bonus. <laughs> yes. I would be wearing it right now, but it's cold in this garage. Yeah. Our I was going to wear like a really cute little outfit, <laughs> and then I came out here, and it was like negative 10 degrees. It's not that cold, but my body registers it as that cold. So she it's sleeps with like 10 blankets. She gets really cold. I do. I do. Don't blanket shame me. Jeez. But I do have a question for you, Kendra. Yes. Can snakes hear you? Actually, you kind of jumped ahead of a schedule here, oh, sir. Snap. How dare me? Yeah, how dare All you? All right, let's get back to the most important part, which yeah. is torts. Next, next storyline is going to be about giant forest tortoises in Bangladesh? Yes. Yes. All right. I'll let you talk about that one. Oh, okay. Um, so, um, I can't remember what is the... The Turtle Conservation Center in Bangladesh is heading a new conservation project with their giant forest tortoises, which is awesome. I don't know who sent us this article. Actually, maybe you do. Um, the tortoise ones? Yeah. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't Somebody matter. Somebody did. One of you Somebody, awesome did. Yeah, some, one of you awesome viewers did, and it's, mm -hmm. it's an amazing read. So thank you. Um, so what happened is that they are part of this conservation program. They uh, had to bred 10 of these uh, giant forest tortoises, and they are releasing them back into the wild to be a part of breeding conservation in the local area and in, in the actual wild yeah, because i don't want to repeat that sentence like 45 times but these guys were almost thought to be extinct like that's that's the crazy part to me yeah is we almost lost these the species of tortoise because of humans yeah humans um but now thanks to the awesome people over there they are re captive breeding these guys mm -hmm. and actually putting them out back into the wild mm -hmm. um I think they're releasing 10 this time because they don't want to release them right away as babies. So they're releasing them at like two and a half years old with tracking devices, all that kind of thing. So they're yeah. not as susceptible to, you know, predation. 
that kind of thing. And they're being watched by, I think, like, the villagers out there and things like that. Yeah, so they release them in, like, secluded yeah. areas. Um, and in these, like, recluse areas in the forest, um, they're surrounded by villagers or villages with uh, villagers. Um, and so they have kind of a pact with them to help the conservation of these of the species um, because they were kind of a primary food source for them for these folks and so they went to the village leaders said hey you know like these are really awesome animals let's probably not try to kill them um and they said awesome we won't do that and I'm, i think that they pay for some schooling or something part of their community which is really cool so it's kind of a give and take um so that's awesome so hopefully we get to see more more updates on the species in the future the one downside is that this particular species uh, their maturity level isn't for 15 to 20 years. Yeah. So horses in general don't really mature yeah. that fast, but these guys, I think is like 15, 25 years. Something yeah. Like that. So that's, that's a really long time, but that's okay because we're hitting the ground running with some of these breeding projects in this conservation. So that's really awesome. Yeah. Um, I think they said they're expecting to, you know, put out, what was it like 200? Oh yeah. hundred and something like that something. per year, possibly out back into the wild so it sounds like 100 to 200 pretty... hatchlings per year to keep boosting wild numbers it's gonna take a while for them to get up to the age and you know sexual maturity to breed out on their own out in the wild but it sounds like they're gonna have a good head start they're yeah because gonna... it's saying the females uh can lay up to 50 eggs in a clutch that's pretty that's pretty good that's awesome so kudos kudos to the turtle conservation center um and everyone involved because that's that's incredible and keep up the word work guys yes um, now yes. we're back to the topic I tried to jump to because I'm so eager to hear about this. I know. I don't know what the snakes are because I don't know. Can snakes hear you? So is that your question? That can is my snakes, question. snakes, can snakes hear you? Absolutely, they can. Ooh. So, uh, contrary to a popular myth, I want to say, I think it, I don't know where I've heard this, but I've always heard that snakes can't hear, but they can feel vibrations. Um, so that is uh, false. Uh, <laughs> In a nutshell. Um, and so according to the research that I don't know where you got from. Um, the Googles. The Googles. The Googles. Uh, yes, snakes can hear you. They actually have internal ears um, and can hear sounds from 40 to 2,000 hertz. So in comparison, human or the human, human. <laughs> humans, human voice averages 500 to 1,000 hertz, That's meaning absolutely snakes can hear you that yep. blows my mind not really but so i shouldn't be you know jamming out full blast in the reptile room while cleaning up snake poop i mean probably not okay. i mean i don't know about you but i don't know if i'd want like a full fucking rock star band happening in my living room while i'm just trying to chill um yeah that's probably not a good idea yeah so maybe like cool it on blast and music or might be baby stressful. baby talk I don't know about booping snoots and you mother do not boop the snoot stupid mm -mm. shit like that um it was cute for like a second but then like everybody and their mom did it and it just got it got real ugly real quick don't touch the snake like oh my god oh uh, yeah these are animals yeah just respect respect them but in that kind of like <laughs> <laughs> since we're already on that kind of that mentality yeah, what, yeah what crocs your socks this week babe Oh, I love this segment. So this is a segment that I really hope to continue doing if we can find enough information to kind of hitch this in the right way. Um, so what really crocks my socks this week is the media. Why do I say that? Because of the story, or I should say the headline of the story that I'm sure a lot of you have already heard about on Facebook, about the gentleman in Maryland who had passed away and had a ton of animals in his house. Um, so some of the news articles, or I should say the titles of these news articles were, I mm, saw one that said, yeah, man found dead in Maryland home surrounded by dangerous pythons and venomous cobras. Like, come on. Oh, it wasn't poisonous cobras. I'm, I'm so glad it wasn't poisonous. Poisonous. Jesus. Um, <laughs> I saw one that said poisonous and I like, about died. That is not even close to like, I mean, they're, they're obviously fear mongering into, you know, people's fears it's, of snakes. It's the clickbait, right? It's like it's clickbait. that standard clickbait-ish. Yeah. Let's get folks on board with the hate or whatever. Um, What's interesting about at least the one that we read, uh, this is the USA Today article. It actually like, it the title wasn't that bad. 
It says, during welfare check, police find dead man and 124 snakes inside Maryland home. So that's not that bad. Um, that's crazy. 100 snakes in their home? That's nuts. I know. That's incredible. I don't know anybody else that would have 100 snakes in their home. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, part of this article was actually pretty good um, in comparison to some of them th- that we read as far as like just kind of going because with the fear mongering the conclusion is that somehow the snakes escaped yes. somehow killed him and that's the rest of the story right um, but that's actually not the story at all um, so the death is currently unknown as of when yeah, they, they said printed no this s- article <laughs> no suspicion of foul play yeah. um, and that all the snakes were secured so yeah. they didn't think that anything happened at that time yeah and were quote meticulously cared for so that's amazing that's a good, that's a good that part. they actually included that and that they weren't just like but what's know. the bad part about this story they were illegal to keep in the state of maryland he could not well have these some snakes. some of them yeah yeah so it's they like, don't specify but yeah but that's that's going to have consequences as far as legislation goes in that state potentially potentially, potentially. i mean usually you know if something makes the news like it did this case famous youtuber um, versus pet cobra yeah. so thanks to all the people that sent us this article but that's going to have consequences unfortunately so definitely you need to be paying attention to us arc because you want to be ahead of the game yes. rather than that rather than not but this also brings up another good point we were actually just talking about the other day um is do you have a game plan for when or if something happens oh, to yeah. you yeah that like, can roll into our question of the week that could be a question of the week yeah, yeah. so do you have a game plan for if something happens to you about your animals for example, this man, you know, passed away. Um, now who's to care for all of his snakes? They're trying to find the local authorities, get in touch, you know, to our, you know, different keepers and breeders or whatever from even place, you know, other states and things like that to take care of these snakes or to get them in the right hands. Mm-hmm. What happens with yours, your collection? We you know, we are over 100 snakes. I don't think any of our family members know or want to, you know, mess with 100 <laughs> snakes. They don't even like snakes. So, well, I think there is like not knowing what to do, who what to, do, to who to contact, the value, the how to care for. Yeah, I stuff. mean, there's just a lot of different questions. So maybe that's something you discuss with your family, significant other, friends, yep. someone that you trust in the community who might be willing to take over if for you know if something suddenly happens to you and you're unable to take care of your animals any longer. So yes. something, something to think about, something to ponder, um, you know, and. Something I would definitely get that down in writing somewhere. Just in case. Yeah. I mean, you know, worst case scenario is just you wasted an hour of your time writing something <laughs> up. Um, best case scenario is your animals are going to the right places. Yeah. And your family's not having to deal with that on top of a terrible situation already. Yeah. I mean, it's just like having an evacuation plan if there's a natural disaster in your area. What do you do if there's a fire in your home? Do you have a meeting spot for your family and friends or whatever? You know, it's the same thing, but with your animals. You know, it, it's one thing when you have a dog or a cat, but it's another when you have potentially hundreds of reptiles and amphibians and rescuers don't know what to do with that information. And that's another thing, too, is, like, there's a lot of, you know, eastern Washington where, you know, we live on the west side, we don't have fires as much, but the eastern side does in California, yeah. things like that. What are you going to do if a fire starts encroaching on the place you live? Yeah, natural disasters are... We just had a, was it a tsunami, our tsunami advisory <laughs> last S- week tsunami. or a couple weeks ago? Yeah. Like, that was insane. I mean, nothing happened, of course, but. Oh, yeah, that was, was, was kind of like, nuts, hey, actually. That's still a possibility out here, um, which is insane. But do, do you have a plan? Yeah. Are you going to put them in all the snake bags and, and bins and put them in the car and go? Et cetera. Um, yeah. Things like that. So. We could talk for hours on this, but. Preparation is key. Absolutely. So definitely be prepared. Yes. And on to that, the next story we do have is a little advisory of our own. <laughs> wash your damn hands, people. Yeah. Wash them. Just wash them and stop kissing your fucking bearded dragons. Uh, Kim, Kim yeah. Kardashian. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking. No, um, seriously, though, like, they, the CDC just put out a thing. This is a real story, guys. A real, like, legit thing. They, <laughs> that Salmonella was linked to 44 people, um got sick from bearded dragons and 15 of these people were seriously hospitalized across 25 states like wash your hands you don't go and you know pet wild animals or you know and these things you know we do keep them in you know cages or whatever but still wash your hands after you're doing it um there was another i think there's a statistic they were talking about with turtles right was it like uh 87 people infected with outbreak strains of salmonella from turtles like yeah with several different with different several different strains 
of salmonella directly yeah. correlated with turtles. Um, so, you know, and I, I assume that most of these had to do with children. Um, yep. So that just might be a quick reminder to when you're handling your reptiles to just remind your kids not to stick their hands in their mouth right after. The crazy part, though, is you would think after two years of dealing with a pandemic, you would learn how to wash your hands. Wash your damn hands. That's, that's the, if you're another Literally. takeaway, the biggest takeaways from this episode is going to be wash your hands and support USR. <laughs> yeah, wash your hands and support USR. Sorry. I like that. You put that on a t-shirt. Yeah, right. <laughs> but. All right. We do have the most important, well, not the most important story. It's, important I news. mean, it's pretty, it's pretty important. Um, and so our final topic of the day is, drum roll please. Fan of the week. Badass motherfucker. 90s kids. Um, anyways, if you don't know what Banff of the Week is, it's, like she said, badass motherfucker. So, yes. um, shout so, out to... Yeah, who is this? There and is a wildlife is YouTuber. Oh, thank you, Justin, by the way, for sending us oh, yeah, this. Justin you. Smith, the uh, Herpeticulture... Sorry, I stuttered today. Ooh. The Herpeticulture Podcast. Um, he sent us an article about a wildlife YouTuber from Thailand yes. discovering the first tarantula known to exclusively live in hollowed out bamboo stalks. So, I'm probably going to butcher his name, but Joe Cho Sipawat, a YouTuber that does a lot of like wildlife stuff over there in thailand yeah he was out there he's a famous yeah he's just youtuber from thailand so we tried to watch the videos but it's i don't i don't but it's there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of good like just footage over there just from the wildlife over there yeah like he was on a field trip though and in the bamboo area and he discovered a bamboo Bam- forest. Bamboo area. Bamboo area, the forest. And bamboo area. Um, and discovered, you know, that this, this tarantula was there. And it's never been found. Discovered, it's, yeah. It, it's never it's, been found in that kind of habitat before utilizing bamboo. So it's just, he. I think they described it as Thailand, Thailand's rarest tarantula. Yeah, because is this really is... really cool. Yeah, so this is pretty neat. So for all you tarantula nerds out there, I don't like tarantulas. So I apologize if any of this information is incorrect, but this is what the article stated. Ooh, sorry. Um... So there are boreal and terrestrial species of tarantula. Um, this one is super unique because it utilizes neither. Um, so it exclusively, like Jeff said, is found in hollowed out bamboo stalks. Um, mm-hmm. It utilizes that as its hollow or, or den or whatever, um, almost exclusively. So it hunts, breeds, sleeps, etc., in bamboo stalks. So that's pretty neat. Um, and I, I'm going to butcher this name. Yeah, I, I can't Somebody pronounce. Somebody help me out in the comments. Please. Uh, bambuus. That is the scientific that's what we, name. That's what you went with? Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I tried my best, I'll be honest with you. But this spider belongs to a whole new genus and species, which is just really yes. awesome to think that in 2022, or I think this might have been 2021 is when it first got discovered. Um, no, 2022. 2022, yeah. Mm-hmm. So this got discovered in 2022 like we're still finding new things yeah so you know owen bigfoot might be out there i'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> so comment down below if you guys believe in bigfoot but that is our bam for the week guys yeah um so shout out to you joe cho sipawat i'm sorry if i butchered your name really awesome stuff yeah i think i think what's really important about this is like they took images and video of this and then they were like this is different and yep. then they decided to send it off to arachnologist. I don't know. Yeah, arachnologist, which is at, at a local university. Mm-hmm. And he was like, "Yo, I don't know what that is. Let me come out and check it out with you." So they went back into the forest and found it again. Yep. And then that's when they discovered, "Hey, this is new." So that's incredible that people are still doing that and they're just not taking a picture and just. I think it's just also important to look at like microhabitat. Like that is. Yeah. incredible little niche of area to where these guys are going to live yeah so i think what did it say that the bamboo stock forests are represent like what 31 percent of thailand's forest something something like that but that's just really cool that they utilize that and mm-hmm. that we just discovered it and they took really good notes there's really awesome footage over there on his youtube channel definitely check it out um, we will list all the links and stuff like that in the description down below. Yeah, I think I think if anything else, like this, just promotes like the conservation of mm-hmm. the of the wildlife areas we still have. Yep. And that we need to be more aware of that and sustain the longevity of these areas because there's a new freaking species found we didn't even yep. know existed. Like that's incredible. That's, that's incredible. It's crazy that it's still happening. Like I know. I don't know. Right. But. That is all for this week's episode. 
if you guys have anything that you guys want us to talk about, make sure you send it to us, whether that's on Instagram, YouTube, anything like that. Yep. Um, Reptile News Radio. Reptile News Radio. We would love to hear from you guys. Um, yes. A bunch of people already sent us articles that we talked about today. So definitely keep them coming. We love it. Um, that is the first episode. Yes. Sure thank you, guys... you so much to yes. all our uh, pre-subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> all 20 of you guys. All thank 20 you of so you. Much. We appreciate it. We appreciate the support as always because – we we couldn't do this without you and without the support from all of you. Yeah, this is I mean this is an exciting new adventure and yeah, um, we do have a different side little segment thing that we're gonna be doing that we're excited <laughs> to show you guys. We're gonna leave it as a surprise though. Yeah, we um, haven't decided on the name. That'll yet. be an exclusive <laughs> just to the YouTube channel, so mm-hmm. definitely tune in the next couple weeks for that. But I don't know, I'm just, I'm really excited for this because we're always just talking about this kind of stuff I just know. ourselves. So we like, hey, let's just put the camera on. Uh, talking to a mic and see how that goes yeah and i think this is a good opportunity for people who aren't necessarily like fully involved with maybe us arc or the local reptile shows or know about these articles or new species that are found that they actually f- might find interesting that we're able to share that with yeah. you on a broader scale than just your local community facebook page <laughs> <laughs> yeah so. because a lot of the stuff gets lost you know and just lost in the sauce basically of mm-hmm. the news feed right so um i don't know i'm really happy this this week is a really good episode if anything comes up next week and you want us to talk about it, make sure you send us a message. Uh, don't forget, hit that like button, that subscribe button, and uh, follow us for more. See you guys next week. Take care.